Chapter 17 I felt low going down the back stairs until I ran into Daddy coming up the back stairs to get me so I could see Great Great Aunt Florentine before he opened the doors to the Serenity Suite. Aunt Goldie had had her time with Aunt Florentine early that morning, and here was my chance to say goodbye after all. Dismay greeted me as I arrived, and I hugged him. He was wearing a wreath of lavender that Mama had woven through his collar. Mama, Daddy, Tidings, Mary, and I stood at the open casket one last time, staring at the glory that had been Great Great Aunt Florentine. She looks so natural, Bunch, said Mama. Tidings poked me in the side. I poked him back. Daddy put his arms around all of us. It's just us now, rattling around in this big old place. We'll do fine, said Mama. Your flowers, Joy, said Daddy. You outdid yourself. I think I did at that, said Mama, delighted. Flowers were crammed into every available space behind the casket, on the casket, around the casket. The room smelled like a lavender heaven. There sure are lots of them, I said. It will make troop movement difficult, said Tidings. We'll manage, said Daddy. There will be plenty of room in the parlors, and folks can mingle. You don't suppose this rain will keep folks away? Mama moved toward the chairs with Mary in her arms. I think we'll have a full house, said Daddy, following her. In fact, I think the rain is letting up. Mama and Daddy sat down on the front row of chairs and put Mary between them. It looked so strange, because Daddy never sat during a funeral. He was always on his feet, helping, serving. Tidings and I were left looking at Aunt Florentine for the last time. She looks so... said Tidings. Don't say it, I said. Tidings put his arm around my shoulders, and I leaned my head on him. I'd seen people do this a thousand times, and now I knew why. It felt good. She was a lot of fun, said Tidings. I nodded my head. She said you were going to end up the big general of the whole shebang. She was right. I blew a kiss to Great Great Aunt Florentine. I knew she wasn't in that shell, and yet at that moment I felt like she kissed me back. It was all I wanted. It's time, said Daddy. He stood up and looked at his watch. Are we ready? Ready, said Mary. Daddy kissed her. Here we go. A magnificent spray of white carnations, red roses, lavender, and baby's breath blanketed the length of great-great-aunt Florentine's casket. The serenity suite began to fill with our damp friends and neighbors, our snap-finger family. Declaration stood by the doors with Mr. Johnson, being useful. I left her alone. Folks streamed into the serenity suite like water eddying around rocks trickling their way up to the casket, swelling around to the family, shaking hands, hugging, laughing, crying, and gurgling out the doors to join other mourners in the parlors and the hallway, everyone talking in low, loving, tide-like tones. Some folks cried. If a box of Kleenex wasn't handy, I'd give them a snowburger's handkerchief. I tucked a handkerchief into one of the big pockets of my funeral dress, just in case I needed it later. I had managed to forget about Peach until he made his entrance. He processed down the grand front staircase, clinging to Aunt Goldie. He was stiff and straight and white. He wore a sky-blue suit and a red tie with white polka dots all over it. He stared at a space in front of him, looking at no one and nothing. Like the Red Sea parting from Moses, the crowd at the bottom of the stairs, the same crowd that had watched Peach make a, Peach make a mess of Uncle Adisto's funeral, parted to make a pathway for Peach. Mrs. Powell started playing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. So like a wave closing in behind Peach, we all flowed after him, ready to celebrate the life that had been Florentine Snowburgers. Dismay stood at the doorway to the Serenity Suite, panting and letting himself be patted. Peach paused at the doorway to hug Dismay ferociously. Then he sneezed. Dismay shook himself and wagged his tail. I had to sit in the front row with the family. I am usually a back row sitter. From the back row, I can see the best and take notes. Daddy had asked Mr. Johnson in declaration to sit with us, too. As we got settled to the tune of Nearer, My God, to Thee, I found myself sitting next to declaration. I could feel anger rolling off of her and onto me. I scooted a little closer to Aunt Goldie, who sat on my left. Peach sat on the other side of Aunt Goldie. He had buried his face in her purple armpit. He began a low moan, so Aunt Goldie began humming to the organs, Abide with me. She nudged me with her elbow, but I didn't hum along. Mama did. 
Mary, who was sitting on Mama's lap, started humming Jingle Bells. Shh, said Daddy. Great Great Aunt Florentine lay in front of us all, waiting, it seemed to me, for us to tenderly and truly send her to Glory Land. I felt she could hear us. I was certain of it. Maybe she could even hear our thoughts. I love you, I thought, toward the casket. Shut up, I thought, towards Peach. At Uncle Edisto's funeral, Peach had sobbed so much, Uncle Oldie had to take him out of the room as he gagged on his tears. Dearly beloved, said Preacher Powell, in his rich Sunday morning voice. Everybody got still. Uncle Edisto always said, every ending is a new beginning. We began. <laughs>